okay so uh, today i'm going to explain you about oracle data integrator it's going to be an introduction uh, session where i will tell you about components of oracle data integrator how oracle data integrator is better than other etl tool in the market and what is the architecture of oracle data integrator what will be going what is going to be the uh, curriculum for our sessions and what we provide okay so let me uh, tell you about myself first i am gaurav uh, i'm working with bisp since 7 years as an odi uh, trainer i worked as a odi consultant on odi in mumbai i have worked on odi 10g odi 11g and now working on odi 12c so i had done lot of uh, data warehousing implementation using odi so we'll be going to take your sessions this is going to be the agenda i will explain you what is oracle data integrator why oracle data integrator required overview of odi 12c architecture overview of odi 12c components about the graphical modules and there are some more objectives present we'll get time so we'll discuss about it okay so let's start with the uh, history behind the tool first um oracle data integrator it's not a innovation from a from oracle it's a tool from a company called synopsys which was france based company they uh, oracle actually acquired this tool in year 2006 2007 before it was called as synopsys data integrator later they have renamed it as oracle data integrator so since they have acquired it they have done lot of changes to this tool as a gui as a functionality how it works so the recent version of odi is 12c odi has a different set of architecture which makes it different than other etl tool it follows elt architecture which provides high performance so the other conventional etl tools in the market which follows etl architecture required a specific hardware or a server to perform the transformation but here with odi we don't require it basically odi uses the capability of your source or your target of running sqls so it requires an sql engine to perform data integration task it doesn't require a specific hardware for transformations like other etl tools odi has active integration which enables real time data warehousing and operational data hubs it has declarative design which improves developer productivity so with odi we basically when we perform development of 
a mapping or a package or a procedure we tell ODI what to do okay how to do it that is done by ODI so that is something done by object called a code template called knowledge module knowledge module provide the flexibility and extensibility in ODI what is knowledge module knowledge module is nothing but a code template available for different set of source and target technologies for performing data integration task so you just define your source target and write your business rules and once you have done that you will just specify the knowledge module according to your source and target technology so the source and target technology will make it to the, uh, the the data from the source loaded to the target based on the knowledge module you use so there are different set of uh, knowledge modules available like for doing data control append for insert update for merge so there are different set of games available ODI combines three style of data integration data based event based and service based so we choose our integration based on our requirement ODI shortens implementation time with its declarative design approach so the way we basically implement data integration based on the declarative design approach now you can see on your screen a conventional ELL architecture okay which is followed by tools like uh, Informatica, Data Stage, Attunity, Pentaho, all those tools follow the conventional ETL process where you have a source and a target server and data is moved from source to target but for transformation it first moved to the a special server called as transformation server. So, here what happens let's assume that you have a source which is Oracle and target as MS SQL server so we basically move data from Oracle to another server a transformation server we perform transformation on the data and then move it to the actual target this is the conventional ETL process that is called as extract, transform, and load. And this required special hardware to perform transformation and integration process. Now let's talk about what does data. So it follows the ELT architecture so ELT stand for similar extracting the data from various sources load loading the data into the destination target and transform transforming data according to the set of business rules so what happens here exactly we basically the data and load it to a temporary staging area on your target. Okay, so ODI required an SQL to perform transformation as I told you. So if you target support SQL, ODI creates a staging area on it. load the data to that particular staging area in your tables okay creates temporary tables and load it there 
and then finally it performed transmission while loading data to your actual target table in your target so it doesn't require a specific hardware or a server to move right? directly move it to your targets on a particular staging area and then from there it loaded to the actual target table so the way it loads it make it more efficient and faster for bulk data movement so you can see the comparison between the conventional etl process and the next generation elt architecture followed by odi now before going further let me uh, tell you where basically the etl tool stands in the architecture so i'll show you a diagram which will help you to understand now if you can see on your screen let's take an example of a departmental store like uh, walmart or something we have stores located in all the locations okay different locations and they have their applications there where they insert their daily sales whatever somebody come comes there and purchase they insert into a application through which it goes to a oltp system rdbms okay here and so once the data reached to the oltp system transactional system data continuously get inserted updated over it so as a manager if i ask you for a rep report saying that i need to know in last 6 month a particular product sales is how much how much sales happen on a particular product so for that i need a complex sql query and that complex sql query if i run on the system where already there is insert update going on from different set of applications from different location it will be very time consuming job and it might not give you the result efficiently so in that case what we have done there is a another type of database which we designed that is called as data warehouse okay where the format of the data is different there the tables present there will be in fact and dimension format okay and those tables are basically loaded from the transactional database and reporting tools which has those capabilities to run complex sql query will be picking the data from data warehouse instead of transactional system because data warehouse where you keep data in time frames where you have non volatile data for a long time frame where you can have data for 5 year snapshot 10 year snapshot so you can perform your analysis very efficiently without hampering the day to day activity going on on the transactional database so usually how we bring data to data warehouse using a etl tool so here in between etl tool stands between your transactional database and your data warehouse and the task performed by etl tool is to cleansing transforming and loading data to your target there might be chances that you have more than one type of sources like here in example i have shown you only one transactional db but you might have files or legacy system as a source and from where you from where you bring data and load it to data warehouse so oracle stands in between oracle data integrator stands in between the transactional db and data warehouse for loading data from transaction db to data warehouse as an etl tool okay so let's move ahead 
and talk about the architecture which ODI follows. So Oracle Data Integrator architecture is almost look like this where at the bottom of the architecture you have repositories. There are two types of repositories in ODI. One is master repository and one is work repository. So what is the difference between both of the repositories and why we have two types of repository? Basically, ODI store the metadata on database and the database schema where we kept all these data basically while configuring Oracle data integrator we configure repositories repositories are nothing but database schema which contain list of tables for storing details from ODI so when we deploy report when we configure repositories ODI create tables in the schema and that schema tables is used for storing metadata from ODI so if you create a project if you create a mapping if you create a connection if you create a user if you create a model whatever you do on ODI goes and store inside those tables inside the repository okay now the question is why there are two types of repository so the details from basically ODI has four navigators so among those four navigators data from two of them store inside the master repository because that is common for all environments if it is development if it is production if it is testing it has to be same that's why we store detail from that particular navigator those particular navigator inside the master repository and work repository we configure based on the environment so for test environment you might have a different work repository for development you might have a different work repository and for production you might have a different set of work repository okay so in a one installation of oracle data integrator you can have one master repository and more than one work repositories so at the bottom of the architecture you have repositories where ODI store all the metadata. Now ODI supports different sources and target. It supports legacy system, files, different set of DBMSS. Let me just give you a glimpse of it. This is my Oracle Data Integrator 12C interface, user interface that is called as ODI Studio. Let me log into this to show you. So the ODI studio contains four navigators designer, security, operator and topology. So topology navigator is the place where you create the connections to your infrastructure like whatever source, targets, technologies you have to use it. You define connections here. So you can see list of the technology which ODI supports as a so using as a source or as a target. So you define connection over here. You don't define which is going to be source and which is going to target that you define in your design and navigator. So here you can see all the industry standard technologies, database applications are listed over here. Okay, like MS SQL Server, Oracle, NetEdge.
we have Sybase, MySQL, SAP, Postgre. For big data, you have Big. We have Teradata, XML, um, Hive, Hadoop, HiSpace. So you have all the listed technologies, Hyperion. Even if you find that you have to use something and that is not present in this list, like the, for example, PeopleSoft. So you can add it to this list. PeopleSoft now belong to Oracle, so they doesn't require to have a different set of technology here. They basically connect through Oracle. So just for example, I mean, if there is a technology which you wish to use it and not present, you can add it by selecting new technology. So that's where you can do it. At the top of it, we have the the studio, the desktop version of ODI, which is called as ODI Studio, and it has four navigators: designer, operator, topology, and security navigator. These navigators are used by ODI developer. For performing different set of ETL tasks. Okay, I'll explain you about all those navigators. Top of it, we have a ODI SDK. Basically, we use a programming language called Groovy for designing all our ODI objects. So we have two ways of development in ODI. One is manually dragging and dropping objects and linking them and then defining rules and another way is using programming language Groovy so it's your wish I mean if you are good at Java Groovy is similar to Java you can use libraries of Groovy's and define all your ODI objects and even automatic automate things using the those uh, SDKs so these are the two options we can deploy ODI as a application servers also that is called as ODI console so what is ODI console ODI console is something which is can be a, can be accessible on a web browser without installing Oracle data integrator so we basically deploy the ODI console using web logic server and ODI console is capable of accessing ODI object design on ODI studio we cannot perform development using ODI console but we can access the developed object on ODI console on a remote machine without installing ODI on a web browser okay so we basically extract it uh, use it to execute the scenarios view the development so if uh, someone on offshore want to view the designed objects without installing ODI can be used can use ODI console for doing that okay so through web logic we have web server service container where, where we can deploy our public web services and data services also web services also so this is a complete Let's move ahead and uh, talk about some of the features of Oracle Data Integrator. So I'll explain you one by one. First is faster and simpler development and maintenance. So this is something which is because of the ELT architecture, okay, which I've already explained you because we don't require a specific hardware to perform mission the data movement become really faster and the development become very really simple so you just need to find connections and at the designer you need to bring all the data source I mean the tables to the mapping and link them uh, which is easy to maintain also 
what is the quality of firewall with ODI? ODI has a knowledge module called CKM, which we call as check knowledge module. This check knowledge module allows us to check the constraint defined on the target data store, target table, while moving data from source to target. So when you are moving data from source table to target, ODI checks the constant defined target and data which is coming from source. If it doesn't satisfy the constant present on target, it moves it to the error table. Okay. And data which satisfies the constant defined on target will move ahead and load it to the target. So this mechanism basically called as data quality firewall. ODI rejects the inconsistent data which doesn't satisfy the constant on target and load it to the error table and those error table can be recycled later if you correct the data so let's say for example if you have a primary key constant defined on the target okay and data coming from the source having duplicate record for that particular column so odi will reject those rows and load it to error table using the ckm check knowledge module next is better execution performance so the execution performance is better because we use the best strategy available for data movement so if you are moving data between oracle and ms sql server and data movement required bulk data movement so there is a there are kms available for bulk data movement which makes it data movement faster okay so we have basically we don't need to do anything we just need to define a right set of km to be able to move data faster okay uh, next is simpler and more efficient architecture so i have already explained you the architecture it's really simple and more efficient than other atl tools Next is platform independence. ODI is a complete platform independent tool. When you download an installer from Oracle site, it's a jar file. Okay, so the jar file which you download can be installed on Unix, can be installed on Windows, can be installed on Solaris, can be installed on AIX, can be installed on Linux, wherever you wish to install. Okay. You don't have dependency that this required a specific operating system to be installed data connectivity so I have already shown you the list of uh, technologies which ODI supports using as a source or as a target which makes it um, very efficient last option the cost saving cost saving in the sense that when you work on ODI you required less resources to perform development first thing second thing the licensing of the tool is cheaper than other retail tools like Informatica is really expensive for acquiring so ODI uh, Oracle even provide ODI with OBI double as a as a bundle sometimes they provide it free if you are buying some other tools from them so they are promoting it because they have already deprecated the uh, Oracle warehouse builder so they have only ODI as an ETL solution available with them so they are working on it and then providing it very extensively and it's a an tool which can compete with tools like Informatica and data stage in the market and competing okay so now let's talk about the components of Oracle data integrator so ODI studios components has four navigator it has designer navigator operator navigator Topology Navigator and Security Navigator. These are the four components. Other than that, we have 
ODI agent, ODI console, and ODI repositories. So as an ODI developer, you need to learn all those things, okay? And you need to understand how they how they work. So all these these navigator connects to the repository. So whatever you perform on any of these navigator will be stored inside the repository. Okay. So if you create a user privileges that is belongs to your repository topology, if you define an infrastructure for your information system that is stored inside the repository operator, the all the monitoring sessions and log will be stored inside the repository. Whatever models you define, projects you define, scenarios you create will be present in repository. So we'll talk about all the navigator one by one. So first is the design a navigator. Okay. So let me tell you first about the design a navigator. Design a navigator is the graphical user interface for defining metadata and rules for transformation and data quality. It uses this information to generate scenarios for production and designer is where all the project development take place so designer navigator is the core module for developers and metadata administrator designer modules designer navigator handles following models where we dis description of the data and application structure projects the development of various ODA object done. Let me show you this. So here you can see a design and navigator. You can see what you have. We have project tab and model tab. On the project tab, we define all the mappings, procedures, reusable mapping packages. Okay. And at the model tab, we define the models for a database schema to get the tables here to be able to use it in a mapping if you wish i can open a mapping to show you let me open it to just give you a glimpse of it let it open okay so this is a simple mapping where basically we are moving data from branch table we have some transformation for which we have used components and then finally we are loading it to the target table okay so we drag and drop the data store from the model tab here link them define the transformation business rules what we require to do and then at the physical tab we basically define the knowledge modules okay so km which i called told you i mean uh, knowledge module that we define here for data movement task at the physical tab so the the mapping has three tabs overview logical and physical so logical tab where we logically define data store and link them and define the business rules and physical tab is the place where we physically define how data will be moved and what will be the strategy for moving data so here you can see the ikm tab where we define the knowledge modules so we have long list of knowledge modules which has different set of you know way of working and options available with that so you have to choose the one which you require to perform okay then once you have done this task is done you just need to execute the mapping this is how simple it is so designer is the place where we define all the mappings data movement data integration task next is operator navigator so operator navigator is used to manage and monitor ODI in production it is designed for production operators and displays the execution logs with error count, the number of row processed, execution statistics, and so on. So at design time, developer use operator navigator for debugging purpose. So 
through the operator navigator you can manage your interface executions in sessions as well as the scenario in production so the operator navigator stores this information in work repository okay while using the topology defined in the master repository let me show you so here you can see the operator navigator if i show you the execution you can see here you can see the execution logs so when i execute something if i execute this mapping like this you will see the log of it in the operator navigator basically i executed a mapping which loads the data to ms sql server so it is going to fail because my services for ms sql server is not running see so this sign says currently working but here if you refresh it soon you will find a red sign saying that it failed so here you can see as a developer when you execute something you can see the log over here if you open this and you can see the instance id the name of the session status the context what time we started what time we end how much duration it has taken in seconds return code what is the statistic number of insert number of update number of delete number of rows number of errors and if there is an error you can read down the error and you can even see the code steps so here in the steps there are two steps work drop work table create work table so one of the step create work table failed you can see the code so here the error is saying that connection refused if you go to code you can see the sql code also so how pretty simple it is and you can see what exactly odia is doing in the background okay you don't need it's not like a black box where you can't see what exactly happening in the background in the previous the tool oracle warehouse builder where we don't have the log where we can't see what exactly happened in the background what code has been executed in what step basically that is deployed as packages in owv but here we can live we can see the code and see if it is executed successfully or not okay so if a data load happened that you can view it over here so like here you can see insert new lines if i open this and view the code you can see insert into table name select into from which table so like this you can see the code each step basically these code belongs to knowledge module so from knowledge module you will be able to see this so operator navigator is the place where basically we perform the debugging task and production user monitor the execution logs okay next is uh, topology navigator so uh, as i already shown you topology navigator is the place where we define the connections so topology navigator manages the physical and logical architecture of the infrastructure like servers schemas and agents are registered in odi master repository a major odi component that contains information about the topology of the company's it resource security and odi resources so using the topology navigator you can define the topology of your information system to odi so that it can be accessed by other odi the topology navigator enables you to manage repositories also and the topology navigator stores this information in master repository let me show you that so here we have topology navigator and you can see the stuff of technology where we define the connections this this is one of the uh, schema connections are defined for oracle so we'll define the connection once and you as many time you need to use any desired navigator okay so the topology navigator contains the physical architecture it contains 
contains context for a different set of environment. It contains logical architecture on which basically OD defines all the mappings. It has languages and repositories. So we manage repository through topology. Okay, and generate action. So Topology contains these following tabs where basically physical architecture and logical architecture is the place which we use very frequently. Okay. Now, next is security navigator. So, security navigator manages users and their privileges in ODI. Okay, as an administrator, if you require to define users for working on ODI, you define on security navigator. You create users and assign different profiles to them. So, users basically it is used to create profiles and provide rights to user to access ODI object and features. So, there are different set of profiles, built-in profiles available in security navigator that we assign to users. So, let's say um, I want some of the guy worked as a metadata admin so there is built-in profile for metadata administrator i will assign that profile to that user so he'll be able to only access the metadata uh, if i want someone to work as a designer i'll define i'll assign him to design a profile so the security navigator is used by security administrator and it is used to assign user rights for the methods on generic objects and to fine tune these rights on the object instance. Let me show you that. Sorry. So this is the security navigator. You can see three tabs we have profiles, users, and objects so profiles there are built-in profiles for different types of user like if someone is operator who is going to monitor the log will assign this profile to him we create users here if I need to create new user I can create and then assign profiles built-in profile from here security admin topology admin and according to these profiles he'll be able to perform the integration task or monitoring task or topology creation all those things according based on the profile assigned to him so there are built-in profile but in case if you wish to create your own profile you can create new profile also and create it according to your work so as a security admin these are the tasks we perform on the security navigator okay so these are the four navigator designer security operator and topology in odi okay there is one more object called agent what is an agent an agent is a runtime component of odi that orchestrate the integration process so it is a lightweight java program that retrieve code from the repository at the runtime okay at the design time developer generate scenario from the business rules that they have designed and the code of these scenarios is then retrieved from the repository by the agent at runtime so agent then connect to the data servers and orchestrate the code execution on these servers so that is the task of agent agent works as a scheduler also so if you have scheduled something to execute at night some specific time you don't need to be present over there you just need to schedule it and then agent will orchestrate it so basically there are two types of agents with ODI I will explain you this in upcoming session for a short I can in brief I can tell you one is Java double agent which is called as J2 double agent and one is standalone agent okay both agents are multi-threaded Java program that supports load balancing and can be distributed across the information system. Okay, so uh, I'll stop it here.
for now before ending the session and asking your question let me tell you about the uh, curriculum which we basically teach to you that i'll just give you a brief idea about it what exactly the curriculum is okay so on your screen you can see the curriculum we have moderate level training which is 24 hour training audience etl developer business analyst and database administrator and what are the require required prerequisite you need to have basic knowledge of etl and sql okay what is the course agenda we basically concentrate on more on the practicals so initial five session i'll explain you about the concept of odi first will be introduction then i'll explain you the installation this is really important because i want everybody knows about the installation of oracle data integrator it's really simple it's just a uh, gui where you need to press next 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 but you need to have a proper system before that so all explained by me about the prerequisites and all i'll explain you about the repositories i'll show you how we configure that i'll tell you about the 12c features because it's a 12c just recently odi has introduced oracle has introduced this one and it is completely different than other uh, other previous versions of odi so it has a different set of features and components i will explain that uh, i'll explain you about the topology how we create the physical architectures and define connections models data stores then we have mapping so mapping is the object the core object of odi which is used for data integration task so this is something which basically uh, we required to work on very frequently so we have a lot of you know almost five four to five session on this where i will explain you about mappings all the components how it is design mapping how we create mapping how we implement business rules on mapping then other objects like procedures with odi packages with odi scenarios and how we manage versions with odi how we implement uh, data quality with odi a concept called chain data capture how we implement through odi uh, load plans how we deploy the scenarios how we navigate the administration tasks like on security navigator creating users assigning rights profiles all those things and there is a step by step debugger available with 12c so i'll explain you about that uh, how we define your own set of knowledge modules if you require because it's a odi is thing which can let you customize your etl flows so you can do it through developing your own knowledge modules uh, and we explain you using groovy also defining odi sdk using odi sdk defining odi object using groovy other than that there are some more topics where case studies which i haven't shown it here but we have available with us in the curriculum okay so this is the curriculum which we explain now the uh, session timings basically it depends on the users uh, if basically there are two things we two timings one is weekdays where we have sessions in morning in indian standard time like 6 am ist to 7 am ist every day in weekdays friday so monday to friday no sessions in week weekends uh, that is one thing second we have sessions in weekends where we have 2 hour session saturday 2 hour session on sunday uh, that is evening 5 pm ist to 7 pm ist okay saturday 5 pm ist and sunday 5 pm ist 4 hour sessions in weekends so according to your availability and feasibility you can join the sessions so rest of the things 
will be communicate to you by uh, Mohit. So I'm going to unmute you now. If you have any questions, any doubt, you can ask me.